Hi everybody. Hello. So we are up in Washington State and we're just about to walk onto a bridge that's called Deception Pass. Yes. And both Angus and I have our little quirks when it comes to anxiety. For me, I have these times where I just get claustrophobic, even if I'm not in a small space, it can happen at times. And what we both found really helpful is having an understanding of how our experience is created and that it comes from our thinking and so it allows us to get um, less gripped by those thoughts when they come up. And so my thing is claustrophobia, but Angus's is, is heights. And so we're gonna run a little experiment where we're gonna walk together over this bridge, which is quite high up. And what are you gonna do? I'm gonna walk over the bridge <laughs> and see what happens. But do you wanna talk about your lit match? Oh yes, so, um, well, so let me say this. So in the past, my fear of heights has been such that it's been completely incapacitating and that I have had experiences where I haven't been able to move. I can think of one episode, which is kind of a bizarre place to have this experience, it was on the Pompidou Centre in, in Paris. And I was on a fire escape and it was probably, I don't know how many stories high, but the fire escape, um, you could, it was like one of those mesh fire escapes, you could see through it and some of the wind vibration. I don't know, it all added up to a recipe of, 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 uh, of major anxiety for me. And uh, I, I just had to sit down and I couldn't move. And I had to be cajoled by my friends into getting up and walking. And I think I had to hold their hand if memory serves me for it to get back down. And I'm, I'm actually going to walk across this bridge now. And I'm already, I know that I'm talking fast because I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> and that the fear is very present for me. Um, and I think that when I've spoken to clients about how, you know, they might find themselves in a situation where they feel anxiety over a specific experience, or they get panic attacks, or they have phobias. I have this metaphor that I like to use that, that I, I have never really put into practice for myself in a, in a big way, certainly around my fear of heights, um, is this idea that if I feel the fear or, or the anticipation of something that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna cause me suffering, I have this idea of like having this lit match. So that fear is like a lit match inside my head and that the, uh, the tendency is to want to go and look for more inflammable material. So there's this sort of dark space in my head, the match lights itself, the fear lights itself up, and then it wants to go looking for more inflammable material. And the metaphor for me is, is it's likening itself to the idea that that, that that initial fear wants to go looking for fear, thinking that will make sense of that fear. So if I can just hold on to that match and just let it burn out of its own accord, I'll come back into balance. Um, and so that's all very well in theory, but we're now going to put it into practice. So I'm going to try, again, that the purpose of this exercise is that I'm going to walk across this big bridge and, um, and, and not engage with that thinking. Not really, you know, I'll, I'll feel the fear, but I don't want to engage with any extraneous thought around it. And, and how much fear do you have right now before going on well, the Well, there's, so there's a physiological response, definitely. I feel a tightness in my chest, my, my knees. <laughs> bizarrely feel a little bit weak and as I say I can see or I can I can I can I can hear in my in the tone of my voice I'm talking quite quickly okay are you ready yeah I am ready all right all right and Angus you're gonna be walking on the um, edge side yes I'm gonna be walking on the road side yes are you, are you okay I don't want you to get I'm fine I don't want your arm get knocked up by a truck passing by my arm isn't in the way okay. of oncoming traffic. Okay, so now we're getting into the real bridge part. Yeah. And I am just going to... Let gonna... me just pan out. Okay. And I'm going to ignore the thinking that wants to get on board. I'm actually probably going to not... It could be easy for me now just to keep talking because that in itself would be a distraction. So I'm going to try and soak this all in soak in the view which is quite beautiful and, and not engage with the thinking and I can see how there's a part of me just look if you pan around there's a part of me I'm holding onto the rail here but there is a part of me that wants to sort of like walk a little bit further away from the rail as I can but I'm actually not going to do that I'm going to try and walk normally how are you doing I'm good I think I've got this 
for a moment. So. Are we able to stand in the middle? Yes. Okay. Can we stop and look over? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna show what it looks like over. I did it. I did it. I did it. Can we go back now? <laughs> <laughs> but this is a huge, this is a huge uh, um, step forward for me. Well, how do you think this is going to be helpful for other people? What do you want to, how do you want to help them? Well, I just really think that this is just a matter of uh, just thought in the moment and how when we have an experience of something that, that surrounds fear, that there is a tendency to want to sort of create a narrative for ourselves that really is not helpful and um, and that's just thinking and, th and then if we can just disengage in, the, in that machinery no not get on board the thinking or not take it seriously I mean I don't want to feel like this is a technique it just feels like I'm just I'm just realizing that there's thought that wants to get on board this experience of fear and that I don't really have to engage with it I don't have to think about it really so you're having more freedom as a result of that. So I'm having more freedom as a result of that. And I think that that, that really applies to any situation where someone's feeling discomfort, they're looking like, you know, they, they, they might find themselves falling into, into a certain level of suffering around whatever experience they suffer in. I think this is an opportunity is to just to sort of let that, you know, hold that match, let it burn out and we'll come back into well-being. I think it's also helpful for everybody to realize that Having anxiety at times is normal. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you if you have it. And that I know for myself, if I start thinking that there's something wrong with me because I'm feeling anxiety, then that only adds to the experience of anxiety. So to realize that, hey, it happens every once in a while. Sometimes it happens frequently. And what I hear you saying is that the more we can just have the experience without really thinking about the experience, the quicker it's gonna pass. Yeah. And another thing that I think is a shift for me is that I thought that to be able to handle heights, I was going to have to get rid of the fear. Mm. And I think that that's probably, I think probably quite impossible for me is, is to get rid of the fear. But the thing that makes it really problematic and at times it has been incapacitating is the extraneous thought. And being, by being able to, to, to not engage with that, I feel that that really helps. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye.